Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is a Rice News analyst, Emmanuel Efeni, Great Malabite on a Friday. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Emmanuel. No election tomorrow, so you are relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. I'll come and sit down for hours. <laughs> Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Yes, let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record, the lead story. Despite global outcry, Buhari defends Tinubu's victory, says he had no plan to annul 2023 presidential uh, poll. Yes, the president at that conference of least development, uh, least developed countries, United Nations Conference of Least Developed Countries. In fact, I, I, I wasn't quite comfortable that we as a country is, is very comfortable in that uh, conference uh, because when you think of the likes of South Korea and other Asian tigers who are at the same level of development with Nigeria in the 60s and are uh, now rubbing shoulders with the big boys in the first world, we are very comfortable in the conference of least developed countries in the world. But that is not the story. The story is that the president was there to represent Nigeria and of course, he was given accolades as a defender of democracy in the West African subregion and acting as a statesman, and I want to add, as a party man, because his party won the election uh, as the president elect as we speak, and he's defending the election stoutly despite uh, the outcry. And of course, international observers. Local observers who observe so many pitfalls in the February 25 presidential election. Now, he said he had no plan to annul the 2024, even if it ever crossed his mind. He had no such power because this is a democratic government. He was elected as, a, as a, the president in, a free, in an election not a military president like we had in 1993 when then military president Babangida, Ibrahim Babangida decided to do the unthinkable and had his way. Cost Nigeria a lot of problem and a lot of image problem in the international community. But here we are, we have a president elect from the Fe February 25, uh, presidential election. What follows? Of course, those who have growls and grievances are heading to the tribunal, and that is how it should be. No to violence, no to disruption of our national life. Life will continue. The tribunal, ultimately, the, uh, the Supreme Court will do their job. Now, uh, if we look at the Guardian newspaper, Reporting poll shift may cost Nigeria more than $2.23 billion suffered in 2019. Yes, there was that shift in the election. According to, um, yes, the SBM um, data, postponement compounds Naira for scarcity woes. That's SBM. Then the president is saying, why Buhari is quiet over allegations of irregularities. March 18 polls, excuses no longer acceptable. IPAC cautions INEC. Yes, Aburi. INEC has eroded our confidence. Aburi is the chairman of the Labour Party. And uh, of course, before the election, he was one of those singing the praises of INEC. I won't be assured by Professor uh, Mahmoud Yakubu, that everything is set for a free, fair, transparent, and credible election. But I haven't seen what happened on February 25. He's saying, look, my confidence has been shattered. And as such, he has no confidence in INEC. But INEC must do the job. March 18 is the date for the gubernatorial and um, House of Assemblies election. Houses of Assembly election. Now, the Vanguard newspaper reporting shift in Gubar State Assembly polls, APC, Labour, IPAC, others disagree. 
while uh, the leadership newspaper, Leadership Friday, they call this, post postponement, governors re-strategize, who, who voters with jobs, promotions, tough race expected in Lagos, Delta, Kanu, Kaduna, Gombe, Nasarawa, Kasina, we, we respect INEX decision to postpone polls, APC. Now, the Business Day newspaper, yes, Business Day newspaper, uh, INEX flop sports tech industry into action. And the Business Day newspaper is reporting that on March 5, 2023, two web applications from Nigeria were announced on Twitter. They were built by a group of tech and media companies and individuals with the aim of recovering missing or stolen votes and reducing the chance of such incidents happening again. And the newspaper went ahead to define uh, vote stealing, which it said uh, was a major problem in the February 25 uh, election. Vote stealing is when the result sheet is taken by political parties and readjusted. So that's what um, the business day has defined as, uh, as vote stealing. When which agents, parties forcefully take election results uh, um, and manipulate the original numbers. And it's saying that, of course, there were recorded incidences of this across several straight states, including Lagos, Rivers, Aquaibom, and Gombe. So, tech, we have the uh, capability, we have capable hands that can solve most of these problems. But INEC is yet to explain to Nigerian what happened, what were those glitches on election day, February 25, that led to a situation where they could not upload the results from polling units as promised. Now, if we look at the Punch newspaper, the Punch newspaper, yes, a sad one yesterday. Lagos train bus crash. NRC Lassema blamed driver as federal government orders probe. Bus driver reckless ignored safety warning by rail, railway staff officials. Six killed. Families donate blood as 29 critically injured battle for survival. Lagos suspends political campaigns. Buhari Tinubu Atiku, others mourn. Yes, and uh, of course, the Daily Sun reporting this story, Black Day in Lagos, Oyo Enugu Borno, over 30 died in train auto accidents. Terrorists killed 26 in Borno, 1,332 terrorist families surrender. Now, the Nigerian Tribune newspaper reporting the Lagos train crash. Six died, 70 injured in train Lagos government staff bus collision. A very sad one. Of course, the bus driver, according to eyewitness report, did not obey instructions that a train was oncoming. Other vehicles were waiting, he overtook, and boom, we had this crash. People going to work in the morning, and many of them ended up in the morgue. Quite sad indeed. But whatever happens to the barriers we used to see in those days, when the train is coming and across a road, there's usually a barrier that comes down. So whether you like it or not, you have to wait. But of course, these are matters that will be looked into in the days ahead. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, if we have the Daily Trust newspaper there. Yes, Boko Haram kills 35 fishermen in Borono. Yes, only a couple, last week or thereabout, the president, President Muhammad Buhari, promised that he will clear every inch of insecurity in this country before he leaves office. Mr. President, fishermen are still dying in Borno State. They were tied in their net and killed and shot by these uh, 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 terrorists. This happened again. Ruben Rufai. Well, uh, I, 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 unfortunately, no, not enough time uh, to go through these stories with you. But thank you all the same. Thank you.